So yesterday, up in Vermont, they had green grass. Now look at it. Colorado Mountain Living shows up and it's covered in snow. So it was about six inches on the ground and it's snowing really hard right now. Could be getting an inch an hour. Can barely, hardly see anything across the way. So I'm getting some good snow. Kids are gonna be excited. Well, hey folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. I uh, got a little change of scenery here now. I, I know it looks like winter still and like a snowy landscape, but actually coming at you from Vermont for the holidays, I wanted to give you guys an update on how our, you know, our inspections turned out because last video was a little bit on the edge as far as were we gonna get everything done or not. So good news is that we were able to put all of the changes into place in the house for the electrician to come back and do a reinspection. And the good news is that he signed off. It took him only about five minutes to go through the list with me. And we looked at everything and he gave us the pass. But the thing that we had to do right after the fact was uh, go ahead and call in the final inspection for our house because our permit was up by the end of the year. So we wanted to get that going on. Um, so I want to update you guys on that situation as well. But right behind me, we got a lot of winter fun going on with snowmobiling. <laughs> yeah, we got kids in sleds, snow machines, everything uh, going on here up in Vermont. So um, our final inspection, we had a few things to take care of, but we did get the sign off on that. So spoiler alert, really it was a quick process. Uh, he wanted to make sure that we had our stairs in place and our railings in place. Uh, that was the main thing. Uh, we had everything boarded up though for the inspection. So he was able to sign off on it so we didn't have to renew our permit, but he does want to come back and check on those stairs come uh, early spring so that um, there's no liability issues and everything. So luckily, you know, it's a fortunate thing that we were able to get through all of our inspections by the end of the year. We were kind of sweating it a little bit because there was a lot of work to be done in a short amount of time. But um, we're definitely happy to be relaxing now and celebrating uh, Christmas and New Year's without having to worry about house inspections. So definitely got some more work to be doing for the new year, including working on that spiral staircase, guys. That's probably going to be one of our big projects coming up in, uh, throughout the winter time. But um, up here in Vermont, let me show you around. We are enjoying some mild temperatures. It was about zero degrees. Uh, a couple days in a row up here um, earlier on this week and now we've got some melting going on it's probably about 30 35 degrees uh, we got they got about five six inches of snow on um, I think it was Thursday or Friday and it's uh, pretty much melting so not a whole lot of snow cover here just enough for a white Christmas just enough to do some snowmobiling and boy are those uh, Boys loving it out there. Kids playing in the snow, not too cold for them because of the mild temperatures. Uh, we got uh, the, the four by four here with, uh, so let me show you about the four by four here with the tracks on it. This is good for making trails. So dad takes this machine and he's got the trail groomer here on the back. This is for making trails nice and flat for doing some skiing on. So we got about 5K worth of trails around the woods in the back here and take this 4x4 out and flatten out the trails, pack all the snow, and then you've got some nice groomed trails. Unfortunately, the snow cover wasn't quite enough to uh, make the trails really good. Uh, pretty, the snow's pretty soft, so uh, you can see right there, grass right underneath. It was a green Christmas here about a week ago this time, and luckily we got that small amount of snow up here in Vermont so we could have a white Christmas, but unfortunately not quite enough to do a bunch of skiing, but it is enough to do, uh, to do some, some other fun. Uh, so just enough to get some snowmobiling going on. And I think what the kids are doing here is snowmobile and then pulling a sled behind it. So they got a long rope holding onto it and uh, having some fun swinging around in the sled there. Yeah. I know it looks like they're going kind of fast, but it's, they're probably going slower than if they were going downhill, a big hill and a wide open here, no trees to smash into. So a lot of good old fashioned fun. This is what I used to do when I was a kid. 
is uh, get pulled around with the snowmobile there. And then we got Brian and Dad getting ready to go out doing some fat biking. That's what you do in the snow in Vermont when uh, it's too cold and too snowy for mountain biking. You, if you get a fat bike with fat tires on it, you can ride in the snow. There goes dad out on the fat bike. I thought you were gonna hit the barn, so I was like, oh. And that's a real winter workout. Fat tire bike. And so last year I made a video about installation of a heat pump here. And here's the two heat pumps here outside. These are for two different areas of the house inside. And I'll give you guys an update on how the heat pumps are going too. So this was the heat pump that we did a video in, uh, last year on the install of this here. Uh, it's, this one is currently not turned on. This one's uh, the one that's in the kitchen and uh, right now not really in operation in the wintertime. But the one in the living room is, I'll take it there. So up here in the living room, um, we've got uh, the heat pump right here in the corner. Now this one is on, you can see the green light. And Dad was explaining that um, this one tends to come on at a certain temperature. If the temperature of the house drops below 70, um, 73 degrees, it'll kick on. And in the past um, few days, where we've had the zero degree weather overnight, sub-zero, um, this has kicked on with it. So right now dad is running the wood stove, which is heating the house for the majority, but um, it does provide supplemental heat when the house temperature drops. So this will kick on. Again, it's silent, this hardly makes any noise at all, um, and uh, super efficient. And you can see here on the thermostat, the Mitsubishi Electric is set for 68 degrees. So um, when thermostat drops, um, this will kick on. So probably good to know that this isn't their sole um, method of heating in the winter time. It's just uh, operating a supplemental heat during the coldest winter months. So, you know, being December, it's definitely an operation because the wood stove is going, but they're not using the wood stove as long as they were last year. So we couldn't escape for vacation without a little bit of drama. <laughs> So we had a lot of blowing snow again uh, before we left and Brian was trying to plow out, plow out the driveway and you see the tractor here parked on the top of the driveway. That's because the tractor's check engine light came on and Brian was not able to finish plowing the driveway and he plowed himself in. So we had to call our neighbor who does plowing and he came to our driveway. But uh, it turned out while he was plowing, he ended up getting his truck stuck as well in the corner there and uh, took a little while to get them unstuck. Uh, they had to use a special bungee cord to kind of yank uh, our neighbor's truck so, back out of that snowbank. Question is, can Brian use my car to be able to tow out our plow truck? Luckily, the Jeep comes, luckily the Jeep comes with tow straps. The unfortunate thing though is that the Jeep does not come with a lot of power. At least not this model. <laughs> so I don't think they're going anywhere. Not looking too good. Look at the wheel, they're spinning. Both of them. And it does not help that it's minus five wind chill right now. It's very windy, it's very cold outside. Uh, looks like we just hit a minus seven. Um, 
Not a fun day to be messing around outside trying to get your vehicle unstuck. So now Brian's getting his truck into place because he has a little bit more power than I do in my little tiny car. But he also doesn't have the best tires on. I feel bad for Chris. He just got a sweatshirt on. It's freezing. I don't even think he's got any gloves. He's a tough guy, though. He's uh, been up here in the mountains for many years. So he's probably used to the cold. So what they're using here is what you call a bungee cord, apparently, for towing. So it can take a, a lot of tug at one time. And what you saw, you know, Brian was able to pull that white truck out a little bit, not all the way. So he's going to have to back up and do another tug. But um, it's able to hold a lot of strain. So he can really uh, pull that truck out of the, of the snowbank there. There we go. Nice. Unstuck. It doesn't look like there's a giant slope there. It doesn't look slippery from up here, but it just looks like a flat surface. But believe me, it is angled, sloped, and um, very deceiving. And uh, kind of why we see a lot of trouble on that corner of the driveway. Unfortunately, didn't we ran out of time to sort of fix that slope during the good weather. Definitely will be a priority once uh, winter's over. Oh, unstuck the truck, but that's really just back to business. So yeah, he's gonna go finish plowing the rest of the driveway here. And Brian's gotta get out to work now. <laughs> day's, not, day's just begun. So that was kind of the shape we left Colorado in before our trip out to Vermont. But uh, fortunately, we weren't expecting any more major snowstorms uh, while during the period we're gone. Uh, no major windstorms. The temperatures were supposed to warm up. So at least that was on our side because we do have people coming to our house taking care of things while we're gone. Um, but that was enabling us to enjoy our time off on vacation on the other side of the country. So just wanted to give you guys a quick update about how the end of our year turned out, you know, as far as the inspections and stuff. And now we're just getting to, you know, celebrate Christmas and relax and enjoy vacation time with family. So it's really nice to not to be worrying about the house so much. In fact, the house is in good hands while we're gone. We've got our friend Brian who is finishing the mud work in the basement while we're gone. So we're going to have a finished basement by the time we come back. And uh, Vigo's out of dog sitter, so he's getting spoiled to death with our friend um, in town. And uh, we're going to have some new fun things to look forward to in the new year. But wanted to give you guys that quick update and kind of fill you in on how um, our year has gone. We're probably going to do another update video on some ideas that we're thinking about in the new year. But uh, we hope that if you enjoyed kind of following along with our story this year, really appreciated everyone that's come along and joined up as a subscriber and kind of wanted to hear how our, how our journey is going as far as building our dream home in the mountains. It's definitely filled with ups and downs as far as thinking you're prepared for everything and then realizing you've got a lot of stuff to take care of still. Uh, I think everyone knows when they're building a home that ends up being uh, five times more expensive and takes ten times as long as what you plan. So just do working along doing the best that we can. We've definitely had a lot of blessings come our way as far as new work for myself, um, new skills, new friends, um, and uh, all of our YouTube community that we're super excited to have. And uh, we always look forward to everybody's sharing in the comments. And hope you guys have a great new year. And we will see you soon. Bye-bye.